So I started doing that thing that I felt rumbling in my soul, and I keep calling it that thing because listen, back in 1993, there was no such thing as a coach. So I didn't know what to call this thing, but yet, what I did was I started working with African-American teenage girls at my church. Matter of fact, that night, I marched my little 23-year-old self up to my, the minister of youth at my church, and I said to him, and I quote, mm, how come there's no programs here for teenage girls? And he said, why did you start one? And I thought to myself, listen, brother, I'm trying to help you do your job. I'm not trying to create one for me. <laughs> but that night I went home and I thought about what he said to me. I thought about how I was feeling in my spirit. And so to make a really long story short, I started a program at my church working with African-American teenage girls. It was self-esteem and really was college prep, but I didn't call it that. I called it more purpose prep and really helping them figure out and navigate what would be next after high school. That one chapter in my church became a second chapter in another church. And over time, over 20 years to be exact, I had 10 chapters in 10 cities throughout the country and we were growing by leaps and bounds. Oh, and by the way, it became a nonprofit, forgot to tell you that little piece. So I love this work so much and I was doing it alongside my nine to five that I wanted to do it full time. So I thought, let me start trying to figure out how can I find a job doing this thing? Now listen, I did this as a volunteer. So I had written infrastructure. I had trained mentors to, co to coach my girls. I had written every single workshop that we'd done. But writing that on your resume as a volunteer, yeah, nobody cared. But I want you to get this. So every job I've ever applied to, I've always got an interview. And let me tell you, I'm sure you can tell I got a little bit of personality, so I always get the job, usually. Well, this time, not only was I not getting a, a, the job, but I wasn't even getting an interview, and I didn't understand why. And so at some point, I realized that every job I looked for, and I forgot to tell you this part, it was in one ads, because this was before the internet, y'all, okay? So this was not an easy task. But yet, every job needed an MSW. I'm like, what the heck is that? So finally I get an interview. I get in that room, I sit at the desk, I look up behind my interviewee and I see a plaque and it says Masters of Social Work degree. That's what that is. And so I realized that in order for me to go after this new space that God had called me into, I would call it the expansion of my territory, I was gonna have to go get that MSW. And so that's exactly what I did. I went and got a Masters of Social Work degree. And as I sat in my classes, I began to realize how my gift had perfectly aligned me to be in that place at that time, in that class, learning how to take those tools to advance my gift. So I've been doing this work for over 28 years. I started back in 1993 when I had the job I've always dreamed of. Matter of fact, I've dreamed of it since I was seven years old. I was doing it back in the entertainment industry. Now listen, back then I worked for Viacom's largest cable network. We had an outreach to over 89 million homes on a weekly basis. And then from there, I got elevated into a casting position working for the number one TV show on Fox. And then from there, I worked with a production group and what we produced generated over $12.6 billion a year. Now that's billion with a B. Now I'm saying that because I want you to realize that it wasn't just entertainment. I was playing really, really big. I was going to all the hot Hollywood parties. I was bumping elbows with all the stars, you know, people you've seen on TV and have looked at on film. See, I was living the dream. But can I tell you, in the dark of the night, when I was by myself, I started to feel tormented by that dream. And I couldn't understand how can I feel like this when this is the job I've dreamed of and I loved every minute of it. And yet, I felt like something was missing. And I don't know if you've ever been there where you feel like you have everything and yet something feels a little off. Well, that was me. And every time I tried to talk to one of my girlfriends about it, they kept saying stuff like, are you crazy? Uh, you do realize we went to this par party and we've been on this red carpet and we've been to this premiere. And so <laughs> I was pretty much dazed and confused. So in the middle of me feeling all these things and not knowing what to do with it, one of my good girlfriends invited me to volunteer at a youth program at our church one night. And so there I was in my church working with young people. And as I started working with, with young people, their eyes lit up and as their eyes lit up, my heart lit up and I realized, oh my God, this is the thing I've been looking for. But I didn't know what to call this thing. But yet, for the first time in my life, my soul was alive. And so I had a decision to make. Do I, one, stay in perception and what other people know me for, the thing that, that looks really good on paper, <laughs> or do I go after this thing that's rumbling in my soul? Well, I went after that thing that's rumbling inside my soul. 
So in my School of Social Work classes, my purpose began to come alive, but can I tell you? So what I thought that I did, <laughs> I thought what I was doing with my girls was case management and counseling. And so when I originally went to social work school, by the way, people, most people think social workers are only people that take people's kids. A social work is so much more than that. I learned that quickly. So I thought that my degree was gonna specialize in family and children counseling. However, as I sat in my classes, what began to come alive is my gift for program development. What I realized, and I shifted quickly into what was called then COPA, which is Community Organizing, Planning, and Administration. And so my gift really is program development, but this is what I want you to get. That when I worked in entertainment, my gift was producing and casting, really putting you in the right role that fit your gift. What I'm doing with, pro, uh, with pro program development <laughs> is the same thing, but it's expanding it to all the ways you can serve people. And see, what I realized in that moment is I had been overlooking pieces of my gift. I'm sharing that with you because what I began to realize is how I was holding up, being able to be the answer that God created me to be in this world because I was looking in one way that the world told me I should be and I had to go after the Nicole that God created me to be. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docu-series, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. Now, if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. So cut to now, I've been doing this thing for 17 years. We were going from 1993 to now 2010. So I had by then two divisions in my business. I had a nonprofit, again, coaching African-American teenage girls, really around helping them get clear on what their purpose is and how to begin to develop it after high school. In my for-profit, I was coaching highly skilled professionals like many of you, and I couldn't take another client. I had I fully, I messed up, I'm gonna start over. Take five, take three. Keep, keep, keep going, keep going. Okay, I'm gonna start from the beginning. Keep going. So I got to now, some 17 years in, I've been doing this thing called my business. I started in 1993, we're now at 2010. 
So by then I had two divisions in my business and my nonprofit coaching African-American teenage girls really to help them understand what their purpose is and align the work that they do when they graduate from high school, which really was to go to college. <laughs> and then in my for-profit coaching highly skilled professionals to start and or grow their purpose focused businesses, I had a maxed out coaching client roster, meaning I couldn't take another client. So I thought, listen, if I could write all my principles in a book, I could give those principles to the women, sorry fellas, but most of my clients were women back then. I can give those principles to women who I can't take on as a client, and at the same time, that book could be a, non a fundraiser for my nonprofit. So when that book came out, I started getting invitations to speak all over the country. So this is the exact thing I visioned for my business when I started it in 1993. Now I'm speaking every single weekend. I'm at a women's symposium, or some kind of church purpose-focused event, a, a entrepreneurial conference, and I love every minute of it. But get this, I'm only generating in my business $13,000 a year. <laughs> yeah, I said 13,000, and yes, that's below the poverty level. And I did not start my business to pretty much be running community service because that's what I was doing. And I remember this moment that I was absolutely done like it was yesterday. It was November 7th, 2010. It was a Sunday evening. I had just gotten home from another speaking weekend. And by the way, you know I had a daytime job because I can't eat on $13,000. I used to call it having a daytime job to pay for my nighttime calling. Well, that daytime job, I was an adjunct professor at uh, Boston University. And my class was at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. Remember, this is Sunday night, y'all. So I hadn't looked at my syllabus. I don't think I had read the books. Matter of fact, I know I hadn't read the books or the chapters of the books I told my students to read, let alone have a lecture note. And I remember sitting on my couch, exhausted, tired, thinking, I can't do this anymore. And as soon as I thought that to myself, I felt in conflict because I was clear that this is my purpose. But this right here, this little $13,000, yeah, this wasn't cutting it. So I remember I prayed, God, if this is really you, you better show me something. And boy, did he show me something. What he ultimately showed me is he showed me me. One of the most powerful lessons I've learned in my business is there are two types of equity you can put in your business. There's sweat equity and cash equity. When my business was failing, I kept putting in cash, I mean, excuse me, sweat equity only. Meaning that I kept thinking if I put more time and more time and more time in, so I thought, okay, I'll work an extra hour in the evening. Okay, I'll work half a day on Sunday. Then I added, oh, I'll work half a day on Saturday. Then I added, I'll work the full day on Saturday. And listen, doing the same thing over and over and just doing more of it. If you look up the definition for insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, yeah, that's insanity. So I was pretty much running my business on insanity. What I had not done is put in cash equity. What I've learned is you've got to invest at the level to which you want to see the return. And because I hadn't invested in my gift, listen, God invests in each of us when we're born. He gives us DNA, distinct natural ability. And all God asks is that we grow it. Well, I hadn't grown it. <laughs> I hadn't been willing to invest in it, and I surely wasn't clear on how to make my brilliance, really take my brilliance to the bank. So what I did was I invested. I hired a coach. Now listen, that coach cost 30000 Now I told you I made thirteen in my business. I couldn't afford it, but I couldn't afford not to do it. And when I told you earlier in another episode that God showed me me, listen, how he showed me me was that coach who held a mirror up to me, and she said, and I quote, Nicole, didn't you tell me you're an adjunct professor? You taught at USC for four, almost five years. And then when you moved to Boston, you started teaching at Boston University. And what you teach is program development. Look at my coach knowing me. Yeah, girl. And then she said, and you used to have a consultancy. And you went into businesses. You work with nonprofits. You work with small business owners. You work with heads of state. You work with celebrities. And what you've done is you've helped them develop programs. I'm thinking, yeah, look at her doing her homework. The next thing she said didn't just change my business, it changed my life. She said, Nicole, you don't have any programs in your own business. Duh. Listen, if the only way you work in your business, you have to be present, you're already capping off how much money you can make. You're capping off how many people you can work with and you're capping off how much transformation you can provide. What I quickly began to see in my own brilliance, because that night, actually in that moment, I hung up with my coach, I started working, I developed my first program. I went from, listen, that program, $10,000 in a day. I went from over that 
one program was 10,000. I went from 13,000 to over 200,000 within six months in my business. Just understanding one principle. You've got to make money in your sleep. And I think the biggest defining moment I've had in my business is really understanding that I have been discounting my gift. Listen, you do what you do on autopilot. You wake up every morning and you just do what you do and you don't have to think about it. I can't wake up tomorrow and say, hmm, I think I feel like being Tracy today. Or I think I feel like being Felicia. No, <laughs> I'm Nicole Roberts Jones. Regardless of what I want and what I do, I am me. And when my coach began to show me me, what I could quickly began to realize is how much I had been discounting my brilliance. So effortlessly, I started to create programming and I created what I call a blueprint. From that blueprint is every way you should work in your business. And I've had the pleasure of working with people like Dr. Deborah Tillman, who's America's super nanny, who had the opposite issue for me. She was already making money, but she had so many families coming to her. Again, this is America's super nanny, y'all, wanting parenting and family advice. And because she couldn't clone herself until she learned the fundamentals to really understand that you've got to make money while you sleep, meaning that you need to have ways to work with people where you are not present. And you've got to have what I call a menu of working with people because you've got to have multiple ways people can be served by you. Some people will want one-on-one. Some people will not be able to afford you one-on-one. Some people will need groups. Some people will want to work with you online. I could go on and on. It's not a cookie cutter. But you've got to be clear on how your brilliance is crafted and created to serve a group of people. And from that, understand and, and begin to build multiple streams of income from it. So understanding that and my business started growing and growing and then here's my next epiphany moment when God told me to let go of my nonprofit. And I started thinking, God, well, why are you telling me to let go of my nonprofit? Now, two lessons I learned in this place. Number one, your purpose matriculates. So entertainment, I was meant to work in the entertainment industry. That was the foundation of what I do. When I went and started my program with Teenage Girls, I learned how to develop programs. That began the next step. When I started working in coaching, and really working with highly skilled professionals, that became the next step. Here's the third or fourth step, if I'm counting right, <laughs> that God began to do. In the last year or so, God began to tell me that it was time for me to work with men. And I said, okay, Lord, that's great. And I ignored him for a couple months, like, mm, yeah. Because listen, I've never been a man. I can't, I can't act like I understand what men go through. And so I was scared of that. But I remember being on a Facebook Live and I'm being interviewed by a man. And when he asked me who my ideal client was, and I said, a woman. And I felt like I was gonna throw up online. And those of you that know me, you know I'm vain, so I'm not gonna throw up online for nobody, right? And so I'm sharing that with you because what, again, I realized is my purpose was matriculating again. We live on levels and we grow through stages. And for me, and for all of us, God doesn't expect us to stay on one level and stay there. There will always be a next level for you. And so now, being on this side of my purpose, what I've realized is entertainment, to program development, to working with women, and to now working with men, is my purpose has matriculated. It's being willing to grow, that you can serve more and do more good in this world. That has been the biggest lesson I've learned, ultimately, in my business. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. 
And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say, apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. So when I look at any challenge that I've ever had in my business, it was rooted in me at five years old. What many of us don't realize, me included, is that there are weeds placed in us to choke out the seed of our purpose. So the weed that was planted in me at five was not being black enough. Now I'm from South Central LA. You can see I'm a light-skinned African-American woman. And when I was little, all my friends were teasing me for being light-skinned. And I remember this like it was yesterday. I had come home with an epiphany. I, I, my mom was in the bathtub, I run in the bathroom, and I say, mommy, 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 I'm white like my doll. See, this was in the 70s. There were no black dolls. And I realized, well, maybe I am a white girl. Now my mother, who's also a light-skinned African-American woman, hopped out of that bathtub so fast and pulled me up. And what I realized as a grown woman she was doing was to instill pride in me. But at five, when your mother is grabbing you up, all you think is that you're in trouble. Now my mother began to say to me, you know, black people come in all shades and colors. She started explaining and talking to me. But again, all I thought was that I was in trouble. So I never told anybody that I didn't feel black enough. That not being black enough soon moved into just not being enough. That then traveled with me through elementary and junior high and high school until the moment when I began to see myself at 23. So if I was my 21 year old self or even my 23 year old self, the first thing I would tell myself is to not look for permission and stop trying to fit in. I think for me, because I stood out and I was different, I was busy trying to fit in. And every time you try to fit into a place that wasn't meant for you, you're not going to fit. The second lesson that I would teach my 21 year old self is to do it afraid. What I have found in my own journey is that I want to be comfortable. I want things to be easy and I want to know exactly how, especially the older we get, by the way, I want things to be easy and outlined and God doesn't work in outlines. Listen, there's a Bible verse, Hebrews 11, 1, that says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you're going after some place or something you've never done before, it's going to be scary. I believe God does that so we can trust him. And so you've got to choose. Are you going to have faith or are you going to let fear stop you? I've learned in my own journey, every time fear has come, it's because I'm playing bigger than I ever have before. So I've had to learn to do it afraid. The third lesson that I would definitely instill in my 21 year old self is that you are more than enough. I think because I had spent so many years looking for acceptance and for people to like me, when all I had to do was like my own doggone self and stop looking for permission and for people to accept me and understand that God accepted me when I was born. One of my favorite Bible verses is, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. When God is giving you abundance, and he's put it in you already, that everything that you do to grow it, to acknowledge it, to cultivate it, means it's gonna be bigger than what you already know, it's gonna be bigger than what you already think, which means it's gonna be bigger than what all the people around you think. So stop looking to them, is what I would tell my 21 year old self, to be okay with the way you are, and look to who you be, and grow it, and cultivate it, and understand it. And that comes with the formula I teach all my clients, which is what I call the be, do, have formula. I think so many of us focus on do, me, me too, by the way, for years. We focus on what do I need to do? What do I need to do to have? And we forget to check in with our being. It's in our being that God speaks to our soul. So to wrap up these three lessons that I learned uh, that I would teach my 21 year old self, when I began to make money in my business and I kind of complained a little bit to God, God said this, 
Why would I want you to struggle? See, struggle and service should never coexist. Why would I give you a gift and want you to struggle to do it? So it's up to me to be all that I need to be, to rise, to grow me, to go after the abundance that is mine for the taking, just like you have abundance that is waiting for you. So what I do is I help highly skilled professionals create multiple streams of income from your God-given purpose. So that's in two arenas. One is if you want to be an entrepreneur or you've been an entrepreneur for years, really understanding the principles to create multiple streams of income. My clients call this to bankroll your brilliance. Listen, bankroll is a supply. God has given a supply inside of you and all you've got to do is tap into it and understand the principles that you can and should serve more people, create significance in this world and make money while you do it. So that's one arena, really understanding how to produce that purpose and create programming around it. The second is in corporations. What I know for sure in the work that I do is many people get a job, this was me too y'all, you've heard my story, where it fit you originally, but things shift and you shift and you grow. And so it's really looking at how does your purpose align with the work that you do? Because when a client or an employee, I should say, is engaged in their work, they're gonna outperform, which at the end of the day for your company means greater ROI. So whether you wanna bankroll your brains or bring greater ROI into your company, I am the girl that does just that. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't wanna work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y Sales, S-A-L-E-S, Hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless.